Hey everyone, it's George the Antique Nomad and I am back with another of these quickie videos where we go to a place we've been before and look at what's new and we try to do a deeper dive into some particular collecting areas as well as showing actual prices that are being asked in retail antique pavilions like this one. This is the Cadiz Antique Mall in Kentucky and this particular dealer is fairly new to this place and they've got really fun mid-century stuff. So let's take a look at some of this. Uh, I think let's uh, start over here. There's this really fun bar and the bar is festooned with a bunch of ice buckets and I have been finding lately that some of these 1970s ice buckets, these vinyl pieces, are actually starting to sell for pretty good money especially if they're by Georges Briard like this one. This one is absolutely red, white, and blue. You can tell this would have come out around 1976. It's bicentennial colors. Uh, they've marked it down to 55. That's a pretty fair price for these. A lot of people do specifically look for the Briard ones, and the Briard ones are generally marked on the bottom. There's a lot that look like this that are not Georges Briard, so that is definitely the name to look for. This one is by a different company. But this one is fun because this is by Morgan and um, this is the Rainbow Bar Bucket. So it just says Bar Bucket over and over. You've got the Morgan signature on the bottom. This is in the 70s. This is the beginning of putting letters on things and signs everywhere, which is very popular again now. The late 70s is when you really started to see a lot of that. It had to do a little bit with the increase in prices and people starting to buy generics, where things were pri printed very generically on cans that said just the name of the product and they were cheap. And that became kind of a graphic style that was repeated throughout the 70s in ways like this. Now this one is also Georges Briard, and it's nice because it's got all the tools and it is the one that's supposed to look sort of like a drum, but there's all your bar tools hanging there. This one is priced at 65, and I think we'll see this under here is the Georges Briard mark once again. So ice buckets, yeah, definitely something. I bought one for $5 in a uh, thrift store the other day in a sort of psychedelic plaid that's worth 40 bucks. So. Uh, also with the barware, here's another one with all the utensils. This is another Georges Briard. But then next to it is this really great Silver Fade set. A lot of people are into the Silver Fade. Well, this Dorothy Thorpe set has everything, including the holder, which is what's really special about it. Um, you don't really see the stems with the carafe in the holder much at all. And that's why it's priced at $125 for the set. Very neat set there with the silver fade and it's in good condition. And then of course a lot of people are getting into any of these gold painted, any of this gold screen painted barware. People seem to be willing to do the hand cleaning it takes to keep these in good shape. You don't want to ever put this in a dishwasher. Notice how it has a blue background on the inside. That's actually so that the gold pops out more on the outside. And it has to do with the way that it finishes. You notice that on this one too. Gold where you can see it, blue in the back. And that just has to do with part of that process. This one is 65. This is by Culver and we'll have the little Culver signature on it somewhere. Um, there's also a really interesting, uh, I like the way they display, I should say, uh, the way that they've done the Pyrex here. And they talk a lot about the Pyrex. This dealer's really good about uh, giving information. So this is the dandelion that's the duet because it's a two-parter. And the idea was to put two different kinds of frozen food in there and make them together. Uh, such as frozen peas and corn, for example. Uh, we've got this pattern here, which I've always been partial to. And what do they have as the price on this set of four? I like the way they've put these little inserts in. So the black gooseberry set they have priced at $195. You see the Pyrex mark on the bottom. Pyrex is definitely selling for high prices now, but a lot of this went through dishwashers. So even though you see a lot of it in antique stores, when we go to estate sales, not so much anymore because it's all been worn to death. So um, starting to get hard to find in good condition, especially certain patterns. The pink gooseberry, he talks about how this was designed by Philip Johnson and was along with butter print, the blue uh, Amish butter print, the first patterns put on the Cinderella designs. And the Cinderella is here. I'll take one out so we can see. Cinderella is where it pours off either way. It's this shape. And this is 425 for the set. And then up here, I love these. These are part of the Sportsman line. They also did sailboats. 
uh, but tropical fish is one of my favorite patterns. This was done by Hazel Atlas in the 1930s. Barware was a big deal to the glassmakers in the 30s because when Prohibition was lifted, they suddenly had a new market. And that was in 1933 when they were desperate for a new market. They have $225 priced on that. I have to say that's kind of full value for that. But if you're a serious collector, you might step up. Um, real quickly, as far as um, stepping up, I should say I'd love to have you all step up and take a look at our other two channels. We have a channel called The Antique Nomad Live, where we do live content. We've got more coming soon there. And we also now have The Antique Nomad Shorts. And so if you like to look at little tips and quick one minute videos, if that's all you have time for on a busy day, well, we have a channel that does that too. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this because they are so ubiquitous, but there's a reason they're so popular. Yes, it's the classic penguin. Art Deco Chrome Hot Cold Ice Bucket by West Bend. And yes, they say West Bend Penguin right on the bottom. The reason we see so many of these is not only were they really well made and they were made to be insulated, so they really worked. They kept hot stuff hot and stu cold stuff cold, but also it was a great design. And so it stayed in production for 40 years. That's why we see them so often is because they actually had a lot of decades to make a lot of them because they never really went out of style. And they're still popular. I said the $25 he has on that is a perfectly fair price that they'll probably get. Uh, let's take a look down the hall and see what else is in here. We are in the upstairs of this store. I think this used to be a hotel. You'll notice it's all a bunch of little rooms, uh, which is kind of fun. It's a great repurpose. I see a lot of antique malls that are in old commercial buildings that had a, a, board, a boarding room or whatever upstairs. This is late in the ring pattern, but this is part of the ring pattern that started in the 1930s. This is a 1960 vintage piece uh, done by Anchor Hawking as a juice glass. Any, uh, there's any number of different rings. Some are all one color, but oftentimes it's this yellow, green, white, red, and it came out in the Depression. It is definitely a popular pattern to collect uh, because of the bright colors. It goes with a lot of fancy, fun, bright collector kitchens. And, uh, oh, let's take a look at these. Uh, our cameraman pointed these out, and I almost was going to pick them up, so I guess we should. These are bookends. You notice they're plastic coated. These were given out by Stanley Home Products, and so if you bought a certain amount of stuff, you would end up with a pair of these bookends. So you do see them around quite a bit. They have $20 on this set, which is a little on the low side, uh, but they are definitely something you're going to run into out there in the field because they did make a whole lot of them. Uh, let's come through here and take a look at this back room because it is a, another group of stuff. And speaking of chrome things that are interesting, I notice over here we have this set, which is the complete coffee set, including tray. That's often not there. And this has the Trilon and Perisphere from the New York World's Fair. This was a Sunbeam coffee set that was done right around the time of the World's Fair, 1939 to 40. So you have this percolator, you have the Trilon and Perisphere on the cream and the sugar and the bottom of the pot, not on the top part that brews. They're asking $70 for the full set. And because it is the full set, that's actually a fair retail price. All right, well, let's see. We're gonna carry on back here and see what else we can find. I think I should point these out because they're, in fact, there's a few things over here. So, First of all, these. These are plastic, but they are plastic 1960s and 70s reproductions of Victorian, where this would have all been made in a porcelain, uh, similar to what Wedgwood was doing with uh, creamware at the time. If you see the porcelain ones, they can be hundreds of dollars, and that's why they started making the reproductions. The reproductions are $28 because, well, they're reproductions made out of plastic. So. Um, and then these bowls are kind of interesting. These are all carved in Haiti, and we see a lot of this work coming out of Haiti in the 1970s when the economy started to go really bad. All of the deforestation, well, unfortunately, that's probably what's left of the trees of Haiti, so might as well enjoy it because um, they have had serious problems there. But when you see these kind of big, wide floral carvings, it's a good indication that it's Haitian. And you'll see these 
turn marks on the bottom because this is all done by hand. So it's actually a lot of work. And they're priced really reasonably considering the amount of work that went into them. 25 on the small one, 40 on the larger jar. And this one uh, seems to be priced at 28 because one thing to look for is cracking. This is a different climate than these were made in. And mahogany in particular, if it's not cured properly, will crack when you bring it from a humid place to a less humid place. So uh, something to look for when you're buying mahogany. Nowadays, even these little signs from the uh, old Gulf uh, gas stations are definitely collectible. $100, even with the chips on the enamel, is still probably about the right price these days. And this is a real one. You can tell the chipping is real. It's also got the right weight. So while we walk on to see some more stuff, I just want to say um, that I really appreciate uh, all of you folks who click the thumbs up button to let us know you like this video. And if you are not subscribed, please do subscribe because that way you can click the button and be notified of future videos. Subscriptions cost nothing and you'll be able to keep up with us and we'll be able to let you know when we're doing more fun things like this. All right, let's take a look in here really quickly, just because I am curious about this. I suspect this is handmade ceramic. Oh yes, because it's very light and it lifted right off of there. Uh, so this is something that was done at home. If this was a little more even and not so blotchy, this blue splatter, then you might think perhaps a California pottery because some of the commercial potteries in California did that kind of work. But that one is not one of them. Now these poor little critters, a lot of people think are really, though it's just terrible seeing the full thing with the face. Some people are really creeped out by that, but other people think it's really interesting. And I had a Native American fellow who put one of these on with his regalia and it looked absolutely perfect like it was made for him. So there is a collector for these. They're only asking $14.50 for the three of them. Usually we see about $15 a piece. So that's a pretty good deal there. Uh, let's see what else we have in here. Little jockey hat. Let's just see what I look like as a jockey. This is priced at 25. People like old horse tack and regalia. And no one is going to be thinking that I actually know how to ride a horse or even how to strap this thing on. But there we go. If I was just about a foot shorter, I could be a jockey. All right. Let's see what else they have here. In fact, I think that uh, actually let's take a look over this direction because I see something that's kind of fun here. It's an entire coffee set in the original box. People do like kitchen stuff. And even if they're not going to use an old percolator like this anymore, the fact that it's got the whole thing, a kitchen collector would enjoy just having that in a display, maybe sitting on top of something. They're asking 46 for the whole set. Corey did really, really interesting modernist stuff. They did this, um, uh, this flying saucer shaped uh, browning like skill electric skillet that is on the cover of a 1950s kitchenware collector builds uh, book. So that's definitely a company to look for. And then back in here, well, let's take a look at this old globe because there's a lot of interest in globes. And so this one's $30, which is a pretty good price these days. And we're going to take a look to see the age. We look at Korea. Korea is split into two countries. Vietnam is one country, so we're talking after the Vietnam War, but the Union of Soviet Socialistic Republics is still that, and East Germany is still divided. So this should be a 19 late 70s globe. It may even say on here. No, it does not. But it is priced at $30, and for this era, that's a pretty fair price. If it was older than that and black, the black ones sell for a lot more. So let's take a look here. A little bit more Miller chalkware. These are the two poodles. $24 for the pair is about the right price for this set. A lot of Miller chalkware sets like this in the pairs seem to go for about that. So that's kind of fun. And then here is another stack of Pyrex in the 1970s colors. You have all of them. Avocado, Harvest Gold, orange and toasted almond. So what more could you want? <laughs> this little guy here, a lot of people see anything like this now and think it must be treasure craft, but it's not. It's Maddox. This is actually 1960s rather than 50s. 
there's the Maddox of California mark. They had mainly done bird figures in the 50s, but of course they wanted to stay in business. And so when this started to become more popular, well then they shifted over these sort of drip glazes. This one's priced at $15. And let's take a look out in this room because they have some fun things here too. Uh, just watch your step because there's a little thing there. And so um, I think we'll just go ahead and I'll stand here and show you the background while we wrap up here. I will show you this side here too because there's some fun stuff, but it's more of what we've t spoken about. So you get the idea here. Anyway, I am George the Antique Nomad. It was really great having you for this. Please check out the social media and links in the description. Also, if you're interested in appraisals, go to my website, theantiquenomad at gmail.com. I am finally getting... Uh, sorry, let's try that again. It's just theantiquenomad.com. I gave you my email. Uh, but for the appraisals, you need to go to the .com because that will take you to the appraisal tab and you'll be able to send the, your information and we'll see you soon one way or another. Bye for now.